Dutasteride is for sure an anti-androgenic compound, mm -hmm. but it is arguably mildly pro-anabolic. That's a great question. Uh, why are we calling dutasteride anabolic? It blocks conversion to DHT. Great question. Yeah, maybe we can splice up the, uh, were they, I think, siblings or identical? No, not identical twins, but perhaps twins that uh, Derek had a conversation with someone about yeah. showing the two that had the 5-alpha reductase deficiency, mm -hmm. had uh, no hairline recession, and more muscle mass. Testosterone is arguably more anabolic than DHT but much less androgenic. So dutasteride is for sure an anti-androgenic compound, mm -hmm. but it is arguably mildly pro-anabolic. That's a great question. This individual, I, I think it commented on two separate videos with the same Th question. Thank you for supporting the uh, us via the algorithm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, we appreciate it. Um, next question regarding the Urology Times Journal. Real-world world data for patients treated with 5-alpha reductase inhibitors showed sexual adverse effects occurred at higher rates in patients receiving finasteride compared with dutasteride. Um, and that's probably taking into account the patients on dutasteride were on daily dutasteride, which is much, much, much stronger than finasteride. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you'd probably have to take 40 mg daily finasteride to be uh, anywhere close. Um, I'm partly just saying that because I think there is a study where someone took 40 mg dose yeah, of finasteride. Yeah, a loading dose. Yep. Actually, no, 400 finasteride. Oh, wow. 40 was the loading dose of dutasteride now that I think about it. It's like a, a three-year commitment to dutasteride. <laughs> Anyways, um, according to the study in the European Association of Urology, the risk of ejaculation disorders was eight times higher with finasteride than dutasteride. Risk of ED and decreased libido was five times higher. Clinicians should consider these data when prescribing 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, said Antonio Franco um, from Department of Urology in Rome. Um, very interesting comment. Um, we've talked about kind of like the, the theoretical benefits of dutasteride for many hours in this podcast, but um, this, I, I guess, should not be particularly surprising. Yeah, thank you for sharing. And I, I think I've seen this one, um, yeah, 2021. Mm -hmm. And it, it's mixed. Some will say that there's a similar rate of adverse events. Uh, some will say like this one, that it seems to be a lower risk of adverse events, specifically sexual function with dutasteride. Um, and I think that um, with, there's an article specifically discussing post-finasteride syndrome yep. um, and that this has not been documented in dutasteride. Um, not to say that someone can't have signs of androgen deprivation from dutasteride, but it seems less common. And of course, there's differences in the number of prescriptions that are written also. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see in the future as more meta-analyses come out um, that kind of pull all these data together. What would a constantly high sex hormone binding globulin above 50 nanomol per liter and LH above eight IU per liter, uh, technically not high, but high normal, I, I get the point they're making there. Uh, what would these indicate despite normal testosterone levels, you know, 650 to 800? FSH also on the low side, you know, two to three, and, mm -hmm. and lots of times this is totally normal. Yep. Like, uh, FSH, they've heard about testicular dysfunction and subclinical hypogonadism. Hmm. Would love to know your thoughts. Subclinical hypogonadism. Reminds me of subclinical hypothyroidism, which is we it, now call the euthyroid yeah. syndrome. Is this a ICD-10 at this point in time? Uh, it is not. Euthyroid-6 syndrome is though. Um, but yeah, as far as this, um, the, my takeaway is LH receptor desensitivity, relative testicular dysfunction, eugenadal testicular dysfunction, um, and in general, latex cell dysfunction to some degree. Yeah. So those are the moving parts there. Um, the free testosterone levels are probably on the lower end of normal, um, mm -hmm. if not in a hypogonadal range, depending on how much above 50 the SHBG is. Um, so, you know, things to increase the sensitivity to LH could make sense. Um, avoiding things that cause latex cell dysfunction, like yep. chronic NSAID use, like even yep. ibuprofen. Iron uh, overload. Yeah, could cause some of these things. Yep. Uh, next question. My testosterone on dutasteride and 175 milligram per week 
TRT was 1,800, so total testosterone. That sounds like some compounded testosterone. Yeah, it, it could have just... a certain compounding It could have just been from certain compounding pharmacies that tend to be... Uh, Overdosed. I was going to say um, generously dosed, but generously dosed is actually just... Never mind. Um, so moving on, <laughs> they're on 120 milligrams now because of how, how high the testosterone was. I'd be interested if they switched which compounding pharmacy or which uh, carrier oil or whatnot the testosterone was. Mm -hmm. was um, have not gotten updated blood work yet. Estradiol was 36 nanograms per de uh, 36 assume, nanograms per deciliter, probably well, picograms per mil. Maybe that's the conversion. Is nanogram per deciliter the same as picogram per mL? Anyway, nope. well, let's it's, assume uh, it's the standard factor of units. 10, factor of 10 different. Um, anyway, uh, the sensitive assay, estradiol was 36, probably picogram per mil. So uh, I guess the question is, is this normal? Yes, it's normal. Um, Dutasteride, especially if this person's on quite a bit of dutasteride, um, 175 milligrams of uh, testosterone, cypionate, or an anthate per week um, will lead to, uh, you know, probably 20% higher testosterone levels. It's not too surprising. Yeah. And also sort of thinking, what is their protocol? Are they injecting this all once per week? Uh, certainly a peak of 1800 wouldn't be surprising there, but if it is split up, yep. Or if you're checking a level, let's say 24 hours after one of your three weekly shots, something like that, if you do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, then that would be quite a bit higher than expected. But going down on the dose obviously makes sense here. Yep, uh, so it's a good question. Um, and also in general, if your uh, total testosterone level on dutasteride um, is, you know, say like 1200, 1300, that would be roughly equal to a, like, let's say your DHT is cut in half from 60 to 30 or 60 to 20 on finasteride or dutasteride. I would say uh, 1200, 1300 total testosterone is still technically eugenatal physiologic range. You could even make an argument that 1200 or 1300, like, you know, there's plenty of people with naturally um, produced testosterone levels that high. Yeah, it certainly can be a natural level, uh, although relatively uncommon.